So, Casper, it's you and me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for joining me with such a short notice, uh, and also that uh, though we're both Danes, we uh, have accepted to speak English because uh, that uh, gives us a potential of a wider audience. Um, I think it was about maybe two and a half years ago where we visited uh, KLS Pure Print in uh, Denmark, uh, and I can't remember. Were you the second or the third cradle to cradle certified printing company in the world? Uh, we were the second uh, cradle to cradle certified printer in the world. Uh, back in fifteen, in fifteen. Well, uh, it's uh, it's really good to see you, and um, and you know I see actually uh, KLS Pure Print uh, more and more dominant, not just in the printing industry and with print with your clients, but you also get airspace or not airspace, but air, what's called air time from uh, a lot of media because they have a huge um, interest in what you're doing. And before we're going to talk about that for a second, I would like you to, uh, of course say hello and introduce yourself a little bit, but also maybe why is the impo- why is the environment, I mean, this is a stupid question, but I ask it anyway, why is the environment so important? Yeah, and, and uh, I can answer that uh, in a short way or in, in two hours, but, but I, I, I think, yeah, hi, and thank you, Morten, for, for letting me join today. Uh, I'm Casper, and I'm uh, the commercial director of KLS Pure Print and one of the owners. Um, maybe I should just put a one line on KLS. We are uh, 45, 45 employees and we produce packaging and, and print. And um, I think, to be honest, back in 2007, when we began this journey or, 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 or made this strategy for KLS, it was all about saving the company and not saving the world. And, and, and I have to be strictly honest about that because that's the truth. Uh, we had to find our path through this uh, future that we looked into for the printing industry and and it looked really rough and and it it was a rough time um and 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 we decided to go for the the environmental focus um and and that was uh, we saw an opening in the market and 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 we believed that that might be a strategy that we would survive with so so that to, to be honest that's that's why we did it mm-hmm. and uh, and yeah, just to to start with a little anecdote. Uh, Fourteen days later, from this strategy weekend, we went to our uh, commercial uh, 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 the, the uh, advertising bureau that should help us, <laughs> and we told them that we were going to be the most uh, green print house in in. in I think I, I can't remember if we said Scandinavia or Europe. And the then he looked universe. at me. Yeah, whatever the world. <laughs> and he looked at me and our sales uh, director, and then he he told us that he didn't believe us because it it, it, it felt uh, a little you know like something we just <laughs> said uh, yeah yeah you could say that and and mm-hmm. then he just found a, a 400 pages book about the climate change uh, written based on the latest uh, climate report from the UN and he told us to read up on on this uh, area and, and and when we could convince him that we actually meant it and knew what this was all about then he, he would help us with our campaign Fantastic. so First of all, we were three months late uh, with the with the <laughs> with the, the strategy because I had to read this book and 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 and. But I also found out this is really serious stuff already mm. back in two thousand seven. So I think that has been the foundation under our strategy since then. That mm. this is really, uh, uh, yeah, we mm. have to take this uh, very serious. Yeah, one of the things that uh, I remember from the interview I did for you these uh, years ago when we did the film from your company uh, was that you said that you actually. Uh, also adopted this not just to a business thing but you also adopted it as a personal thing so you and your family like started like really to uh, rethink how you live your lives and how you consume right yeah and and i also think it's important as management uh to to lead the way uh yeah. it, it is all about being transparent and authentic and 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 you know i i, I couldn't ask my employees or my colleagues to, to look into climate issue and take it serious and then drive the biggest four-wheel drive car into the parking lot every morning. That would not be credible. So, so, so yeah, we had to so, so live was, the, the, the yeah, strategy yeah, also so, by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, so we are, you're still awaiting for the, the, the electric uh, Hummer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. I've seen oh, it, yeah, but no, no. no, no I, didn't, I didn't know it existed. I was just kidding. <laughs> I think okay. I have, yeah, a little more than 250,000 kilometers in electric uh, a car right now for my and uh, that's been a fluence and a, a miss and leaf so yeah 
not not a Tesla uh, yet. Yeah, okay. I think that uh, you know, I think that the 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 fortunately the 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 green agenda has grown on many people's radars uh, the, since you started it because you were. Uh, uh, at least in Denmark and in most of the world, like a really front runner in this one. And and I also remember from visiting you that it was not as it was not a walk in the park, right? It was uh, a lot of work, uh, just understanding every little part of the chemicals used in everything, to how the machines what they uh, emit, uh, to uh, what papers actually contain, to uh, I mean, to how much energy you consume and how you. Uh, optimize your building from client. I mean, there was like shitload of things, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, and you're still here. So the strategy in, in relation to survival that seems to have worked, right? Um, yeah. Um, if if we look at it, let's say that because I know that I think I know. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that your agenda has grown since you started this in the fact that. When it was a, a, a matter of survival for KLS uh, at that time, now it's also agenda that you really want more printing companies to become environmentally friendly, right? Yeah, that's right. And 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 just to put a, some figures on, on this period of time, when we began this strategy back in two thousand seven, we were roughly a little more than two thousand offset printers in Denmark. And uh, the last uh, time I looked, we were just around fifty with offset print machines left in Denmark. Whoa. So yeah, so that's been mm. quite an interesting <laughs> period of time. Yeah. But yeah, and, and and I also have to stress that that business as usual will always be the easiest thing. Yeah. Uh, and and but we will also still just get the same as we're used to. Yeah. So of course it has been a lot of, of work and a lot of good stuff happening, but also a lot of misunderstandings and 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 wrong turns that we have had to correct. Um, but I think we have proved that the. Environmental strategy is a survival strategy, um, but it's not an, an easy walk, uh, mm. and, and and it's really important that it's based in the company strategy and not in the communication part yeah, of the company. Uh, um, I think yeah. we learned that really early on. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, Casper, because um, um, you know you have you have spent as as just mentioned, they spent a lot of time in the investigating all the aspects of uh, running a printing company and uh, sustainable right is it a, is it a job that stops i mean do you get to a certain level and then you're green or is it a constant uh, chase for improvements yeah, I, I was a you will never hear me say that now we cannot do anything more because okay. there's always room for improvement hmm. um also in the green agenda um i think we have you know I think we have reached a lot of of of, of uh, landmarks, but but we still have a lot of <laughs> new goals on our strategy plan. Um, mm -hmm. We also try to widen the perspectives to look into more. Or yeah, for instance, the sustainable development goals behind me here. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we take part in that in a broader perspective, uh, together with our neighbors in our industry area, um, together with our municipality? Um, we're also quite uh, active in, in Danish industry to, mm -hmm. to look into how can we affect the, the EU with mm -hmm. new legislation. Mm -hmm. um, which we truly believe that if we want to survive, we have to, you know, take the high stand up the high road and mm -hmm. and and uh, let others uh, just run for the cost cutting, low price model because the whole system in 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 in, in Europe is, is you know we cannot compete with with China, and I think we shouldn't do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you have earlier on today talked about uh, speed and, and, and quality and all that, but I think that we have to, you know, have the high standard. And, mm -hmm. and I think that consumers uh, expect that. And, mm -hmm. and and I do believe strongly, and I think we prove that there's a market for this. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you today was also because I think that, as you said, it's uh, easier to just do what you have always done, right? Uh, and I think that if you are a printing company, let's say that you... I wouldn't say that you were in the same situation that you were then, uh, because uh, I mean, it's it's never fun to be in a situation where you're too stressed about your own survival. But uh, I was I was wondering um, if you are considering at least taking the steps toward becoming more green, right? <laughs> Is there some like low hanging fruits that takes you from A to not to C but to B, and then you basically, uh, I mean. 
I, mean, I know that the end goal is, of course, to to have something that like create to cradle or have something that is is uh, uh, carbon carbon neutral or you know all these kind of things. But it's just it's a low hanging fruit on how you can improve easily uh, on the green agenda just to get a little step in the right direction. Or is it always only all in? I think uh, the the how it will affect you positively is combined with the how how much you you invest in it so yeah. so yeah so if you just you know switch the coffee to ecological coffee i don't think you should expect to get into the news um but yeah there of course there are some steps to to begin with and i think mm. a lot of companies today have have taken those steps um mm. Always, you know, look into the company within the four walls. Can can, can you reduce consumption on ex- yeah. electricity, heating, water? You know, it's it's good business. Uh, I think in average, what we have done more than two hundred projects, and in average, I think they have had a, a, a payback in in average two years. So you know, it's common sense. It's good business. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a good way to start. But but first of all, I think get a baseline. Know yeah. where are you today? Yeah, and then accept that this is going. This is going to be a long journey, yeah. and 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 you, it has to be um, deeply incorporated into the the management. Uh, mm. that this is the strategy that will mm. follow. What I like about you saying here is basic because I think that maybe not so much today, but I mean five, ten years ago, I think there's a lot of people that were of, of the opinion that okay, go green, you'll go bankrupt, right? Because it was perceived as being too expensive. Expensive. I mean, everybody could probably see that uh, polluting the water and polluting the sky and polluting everything was not a good strategy for the long term. But it was not me. It must be somebody else, right? But as yeah. you say here, it's basically that it, if it's it's it really makes sense to identified your your baseline as you say and then basically develop uh, uh, all the the activities you need to do in order to all the projects as you said to get there and then you at the same time can see that it makes sense business-wise i mean this is something that a lot of printing companies should do re- really yeah and i also think that we have to acknowledge that actually when when we say green aid is expensive i think that's today because some other pickup the rest of the the, the, the bill for, for, yeah. the, for the polluting part, yeah. uh, and and uh, unfortunately, and this is not to say to you know to sound uh, a little bit uh, uh, moralizing, Saved. but, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yeah. I I think uh, we have to do something if we want to look our children and grandchildren into their eyes and say mm. we did what we could because right mm. now we are writing a lot of of of, of checks on on their behalf. Uh, mm. uh, um, so that they have to pick up the the, the, the payment for those. Uh, yeah. If we don't do anything at yeah. all on the sustainability, and and on that note, I can't help think about because I mean um, I think that if you look in broad terms about uh, our industry, we talk about uh, that it is so environmental and uh, the forestry is is good for the environment and paper is a recycled resource and you know you know you have seen all the headlines. Yeah. Uh, with the knowledge that you have now from being really going into depth, um, are we fooling ourselves a little bit? Are we polluting more than we think? I think if we produce the right way with the high standards, uh, I, 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 I truly believe, and I think the figures show it, that, that it is a sustainable way of producing. Um, if we don't put any harmful materials or components into the, 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 the production, then it is a circular business uh, model. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you know, we should never make print uh, just to save the princess, but print uh, print is, is, is a strong media uh, mm-hmm. for communication. And, and, um, and I think what is difficult for some of us or most of us in the industry to talk about is actually that, that the, the online use has a lot of, 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 of uh, carbon emission. Mm. Um, and, and that and, is that is true, uh, but I can't help think about it also that that uh, a side effect I, w- I would say from going online also with the retailers online like Amazon and and, and you know these type of companies, uh, you have way more uh, packaging that is produced on one to one basis, right? And that you know instead of having like one shipment to a supermarket and you bring it you know distributed from there, you have like a lot of couriers. And I, I was just thinking that sometimes I consider that maybe 
a, a hub uh, strategy uh, for distribution. Because I mean, it, uh, let's say that you do the best you can in order to produce the right products, but then the products are distributed in ways that are not environmentally friendly afterwards, uh, not from your side, but from maybe your customer sites or their customer sites. Then it's like it's like finding the the the, the balance between uh, uh, where where we can. Uh, for example, when I spoke to uh, um, uh, Michael Torvalson from Antalis uh, uh, just an hour ago, and uh, we also spoke about that they are uh, carbon offsetting uh, uh, to the to the ramp basically, right? Uh, on some papers and anti uh, environmentally friendly, uh, uh, and they are now from Antalis side going to. Uh, uh, I, I think they are actually now uh, addressing at least the emission side of the paper, but that is that is only a fraction of it. Because as, was it true that you actually, when you did uh, started in the beginning, you actually tried to reverse engineer the 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 chemistry of paper, uh, where we thought it was like a natural product and it was not as natural as you expected, or do I remember wrong? And no, that, that's right. I think we had a little eye opener because that, I think. During the process, there's a lot of, of, of when we tried to get a full overview of, of, of what was uh, used in paper production or cardboard production or ink production, it uh, quite fast went uh, complex uh, because we had to get up to four levels uh, uh, upstream from our suppliers to get the full view of everything that was uh, included in the production. And, and it's a lot of effort to, to get that knowledge and, 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 and to actually go for the complete 100% knowledge about what is inside, the, what is used in the product. And so, we found some things that, I, you know, I'm sure that the producer didn't actually, I don't, I don't think they actually knew what was in because, you know, it, it, it blurred a little bit during the steps backwards. So what um, you're saying is basically that when you started this certification process and you let's say that you take a, a random piece of paper, we call it X. And then uh, you know that it's produced at that mill. Then you talk to that mill, how it's produced. And then it's like woods from here. And then it's uh, uh, um, some kind of additional chemistry or whatever from somewhere else. And then you go back to that place to figure out what is that chemistry. And then they have subcontracted. You go four steps back in order to... Yeah, three, uh, yeah. three four steps back. So we need to get down to the exact cast numbers of, of what is included, you know, the specific chemical or, or yeah, yeah. ingredient. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's a lot of, of work, um, but it's also comforting to know. Yeah, and, and of course you know. Sure you know course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, if, if some of the materials, you know, they went straight through the process and everything was good. Mm. Some of the materials, we found something that could be replaced and everything was fine. And, and mm. some of the materials, you know, we found something that could not be replaced and we just had to stop the process. Okay. So I think and, we have tried all of it. Mm, mm. And, and um, I mean, um, I think that when you say this, uh, I think that some people could be scared to death because this is something that is not still unified, right? If you go to a, a paper merchant and, and ask for a paper, it, the, the the data and the and the seriousness that you have put into finding these things on the papers that you use, for example, uh, this is not common knowledge, right? So you will you will have to start, a, and I, that's a almost like a business secrecy to KLS because you spend a fortune on on actually doing this research, right? But does that mean that? Uh, Let's say that you, uh, I saw that you got a new member of the Cradle to Cradle company, uh, family. I can't remember who it was. It was a... Fergale in uh, Switzerland? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true, yeah. Uh, and I was just, I was just, I was just thinking that, that uh, if, if you want more um, um, friends and family members of that group, uh, do you share that information? I mean, let's say that I'm a printing company and I would like to be a Cradle to Cradle uh, certified printer. Can I then hook into you, or how does it work? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, uh, we were the second printer in, in the world to get the Great Print certification back in, in May 15. Uh, the first company was uh, Google in Austria, mm -hmm. and uh, during the last stage of the process, we simply I, I called uh, Ernst Google, uh, mm -hmm. and and it, it showed up. It showed that that we had a lot of the same perspectives on environmental issues and cooperation, and and we decided to join forces in developing new materials. And, and then I think a year and a half later, Fergally joined also mm -hmm. from Switzerland. And, and today we develop materials together. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense because we are also three companies to share the cost when we don't okay. succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then also we all have equal access to materials when we succeed. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, I think that gives us a lot more power 
in, in developing new materials. Mm. And and we actually looked at each other a few years, but two years back, I think, and, and decided that we put all our knowledge into a community to be able for other princes to join as well as, as yeah, equal partners. And that, and that was why I was asking. So that basically yeah. means that if you want to step in today, you don't have to go back to 2077 and, and basically start from scratch. You can you can uh, jump in and learn and contribute to, to the, the, the community of, of becoming a great cradle printer. That's what you say, right? Yeah, and, and, and uh, we have called the model Fair Innovate because you pay a fair share of what is already innovated uh, yeah. or developed, and and yeah. and and if you have some materials that you have developed, then you, you know you put them into the the, the, the equation, and, and then we uh, look into uh, yeah. how it is, and and then uh, you can join as an equal partner, and and mm-hmm. then we develop new materials together, Fantastic. and and we think this is really a powerful way of working together because of course mm-hmm. actually we're working together with competitors, but you yeah. know. What is shown was uh, shown us was was that it's it's our closest partners today. You know, yeah. there's not a week where I don't email or or, or, or maybe talk to either Google or Fergley, mm-hmm. and we share a lot of knowledge. We share a lot of also marketing materials. Um, so so today they are our closest uh, partners. Fantastic, Casper. Um, another thing I think that some people might be wondering about. Um, there is an agenda from also from end customers about uh, the green thing. And I, I take that you also very seriously are concerned when you see greenwashing uh, as part of branding, oh, yeah. things like that. Yeah, Because that will basically damage the investments you have done. It, uh, if, um, I know also, I can't remember if it's public. Uh, I think it's pu- you have some really great brands among customers now that have chosen to work with you uh, because of your cradle to cradle. Um, uh, certification and, and your your uh, uh, work with the environment. And um, when I have two questions in that relation, one thing is: Do you think that um, the environmental agenda is so important today that alone being an environmental friendly printing company will give you orders and new customers? First thing, and second uh, question, maybe you can answer that in the same in the same line: Is do you think it's a potential of being more Profitable also when selling, I mean, not profitable as a company, but can you have higher margins on your products because you have also made these investments and people realize this? <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, those are good questions. And and I think uh, what is really important to understand and, and what we learned more or less the hard way because we uh, was in a program uh, called a Green Conversion Foundation or something like, you know, converting your strategy. Um, and they they told us that in order to uh, progress uh, for, uh, access the next level of this uh, project, we had to do a market interview and interview with the potential customers. And and we talked to a lot of uh, the potential customers. And you know, half an hour into the interview, we also asked them, "What if the price may be two to five percent higher?" And you know, out of twenty eight interviews, the twenty seven of the companies said, "Well, then it's not interesting." So. Oh. You know, I thought, yeah. I thought so, you were yeah. about to say the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we hope to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back in, when we did the interview in 2014, but but I think it's really important to accept that that price quality um, to deliver on time, uh, also you know to to have a good dialogue with your customers. That that's the basic, and that needs to be in order. Uh, and then environmental focus can can come on top of that and, and we, it opens a lot of doors but but we need to produce on time and in the right quality at, at the right price. Of course our packaging with a high-end c- a cardboard, we cannot match you know, a really low-grade low yeah, cardboard yeah. because you know, it's not. half the yeah. price when yeah. you purchase the cardboard but at a, the, the same level of quality we need to match the prices. Um, yeah. That said we also generate another kind of, of value for our customers we believe um, and and you know our suppliers create more value for us because we have never been so dependent on our uh, ink supplier or cardboard supplier, but they've never created so much value for us. And I think the same goes for our customers. We we develop together, we share knowledge. So I think a lot of the industrialization has been all about you know having those silos where you know suppliers was something that you needed to be able to switch each second year to to save some some few percentage of the, of the cost. And, and, and I think sustainability actually shows us that we need to have shared value streams together with our suppliers 
until the end customer to get the right solutions yeah. and, and, and what the consumer expects. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, and I, I think also puts in in really in perspective because I mean uh, we we live in a globalized world, and that also puts the perspective that some of the measures that we're talking about here should be hopefully universal, but at least on a European level, right? Because I mean, if we are competing uh, north, south, east, west uh, on very different uh, uh, you know baselines, uh, it is very difficult. I think the, I think that one of the and and it, that includes myself, uh, to be honest, because when I was uh, younger and and less experienced, I thought that uh, okay, printing is printing, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, and uh, if you have something where where you can't make a real differentiator into the product and the service as you just described, then it becomes a commodity. And if it becomes a commodity, it's often only the price that really matters when the day is over. So I think that this is also showing that the, if if we as an industry can take that responsibility upon our shoulders and and okay we go this step further and we we do these things extra then you can put a price tag on it as well yeah i agree and then i saw uh, um, and uh, i saw some kind of, of uh, an analyst uh, of uh, the, 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 i can't remember who was analyzing children books mm-hmm. and then they analyzed the children book uh, you know make for um, very small children uh, uh, made in China, and I can't Confused. remember. I think it was something between thirty-five and forty harmful chemicals <laughs> that was oh. actually measured in this book. You know that they chew yeah. on, yeah, yeah. and and I think uh, I'm sure that the consumer who buy this book expected to be fair and and okay to give it to an, an infant, uh, and for sure they would pay maybe ten, fifteen percent more. To be sure that there was no harmful chemicals within this book, and, it, and, and that should be that, the strategy for for yeah. the European companies, you know, to have yeah. the high standard. Because yeah. uh, and it's yeah. and it's fu- funny that you mentioned that because if you had like a plastic product, you would have been certified that it was without tallardar, and you would have been, you know, all these things. But the books, I think that most people don't see it as something that is could potentially be dangerous, right? And that is uh, is a very good point. I, I can tell you that um, I can't remember if I shared it with you, but uh, we. Uh, we actually tried to raise money for making a global uh, film about env- environmental impact uh, two years ago. And uh, and uh, the reason why we wanted to do that was because I saw there was a, a paper mill in, uh, Vietnam, uh, no, in Korea, South Korea, that were using excess heat from the surrounding factories to actually create a paper from. But at the same time, they said that they were uh, neutralizing the, the carbon dioxide by uh, adding some kind of chemicals that turned it into the Whitener in paper so they could create uh, 100% environmentally friendly paper. And, you know, I, I just thought that, um, I just thought that, okay, this, if this is true, it sounds really great. But if nobody's really measuring them and checking them and, and you know, really fact checking things, it's sometimes too easy to just ship pallets to the US and then say, it's green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why it should not be in the communication uh, part of the company. It must be in the in the management and in the strategy and, and where the knowledge is. is precisely, made. precisely, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, I, and, and I think you have to accept that, that you get what you pay for. So, yeah. you know, it's not the producer who tries to, to rip you off when it, if it's more expensive. Usually it's just because it's a better quality. It's, well, uh, often it's that simple. Yeah, and I, I agree with you on that one. I think that our industry is biggest problem uh, is basically that uh, we value, uh, we quote everything based on uh, the product and not on the services that we offer. I think that we should learn that. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good note. <laughs> okay. Casper, uh, thank you very much for your time. And and by the way, uh, talk about China, we're going to talk to a Danish guy who's operating uh, a Chinese uh, packaging company now and in the discussion about buying secondhand machines versus brand new machines. So uh, go to Inkish TV and see it if you like. And uh, for uh, you, thank you very much for your time. I hope to see you soon again. Thank you.